really excited to introduce our first session today with Kevin Mefford of the PSC and Tristan Tao from Iterable to talk about a very important area on brand building. As a pre-sales individual leader and blogger with my pre-sales or salesengineer.guy.com blog, I'm seeing branding for each aspect is very important. And I, I'm helping, you know, make sure people know what to expect from you. So Kevin, Tristan, over to you guys. Let's get started with day three. Yep. Thank you so much, Greg, and, and welcome everybody into this session. Uh, I'll be totally honest, when James asked me to help out with this session, my first response was, James, I, I don't have a big brand in the pre-sales world. Why am I going to present this? Uh, and we talked about the idea that, hey, it's not just external branding, just where most people's minds go when they hear about personal branding. It, it's about your internal brand too. Um, now I chose this quote from Elon Musk, uh, because it highlights the fact that your brand is just a perception people have of you, and eventually that becomes reality. Uh, on the right-hand side, I've listed a few things I've heard from people over the years uh, as to how they see me or what I'm known for. Um, early in my career, I, I thought it was enough to just put in hard work and hope people have the perception I wanted. Uh, but I really learned over the years, you need to cultivate that as you go about your day job. Uh, in fact, in my last role, uh, one of my sales VPs told me that, hey, I always request to have my new reps assigned to you uh, because I know you can explain things really simply. They'll get it. Uh, and I also know you have the patience to teach them. Uh, a lot of the, the pre-sales people weren't interested in doing that. Uh, so for me, that's a big part of my brand. Uh, it, in fact, you know, helping people, training, facilitation, those are really some of my passions, and it's a big part of my personal brand that I've tried to build over the years, uh, wherever I've been. Uh, in fact, part of my career move to join the PSC as the head of community, uh, because it gave, gave me that chance to help other people build up their brand. So uh, as you're looking for those opportunities of getting your voice known, uh, building out other things you're known of, uh, known of for, that's really what the, the pre-sales collective and the pre-sales leadership collective is built to do. Now today, I wanna to give you a few tips on building your personal brand, um, how you can create it, how you can own that, that brand yourself. Uh, first off, it needs to be intentional. You need to define your personal goals. Uh, you need to write them down. They need to be real and concrete. Uh, and by that, think about where you wanna take your personal brand, where you want to build yourself up. And, and part of that is defining the qualities. What do you define as an amazing leader? What are those qualities you see in yourself or you think you should be striving towards? Uh, most importantly, what sets you apart from your peers? Uh, those are the types of things that you wanna to pull together and, and get down. Because really it's all about how do others see you? What do you want people to think about when they hear your name? What do you want people to perceive uh, when they think about you as a leader out there? And one way to get about that is to think about your passions. What are the topics that you can talk about endlessly? endlessly? Uh, some of that may be professionally, some of it may be personal, uh, but the big thing is, are you sharing those with other people? Do other people hear that passion from you coming out in your day to day when you talk about things? And a big part of that, writing your own story. Um, think about the, those qualities, those attributes you're trying to define and build out ways to how can I tell this story? How can I present these qualities as something that I have? A, a great way to do this, find yourself an accountability buddy. Uh, the PSLC is great for that. Reach out to other people and ask them to help hold you accountable to these goals and these qualities you're trying to present. And then finally, like everything in pre-sales, practice, repeat, and share it. Uh, we talk all the time about our demos. Hey, we need to build stories. We need to have things to make people remember, uh, remember what we're talking about. Your brand is no different. You need to take those qualities, those goals that you're trying to build out, work out stories of how you can present that to other people, help them remember you, uh, and you have to keep doing that over and over again. Back to the accountability buddy. It's a great way to practice that with someone else uh, so they can follow along with you and, and help you work through that. 
So those are the big things I wanted to highlight first on your personal brand. My biggest challenge is really think about how you want people to perceive you and then work towards that goal. It's not something that just magically happens. It's something that you need to be cultivating every day, every interaction you're having with different people. With that, I want to turn it over to Tristan. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, Tristan Chow here, VP of Solutions at Iterable. And I also wanted to start my portion with a quote. And the quote is, your brand is what other people say about you when you're not in the room by some guy named Jeff Bezos. And I, and I say this quote, and I know people in the audience may be wondering and eager to raise their hands and, and asking, Tristan, should you potentially have updated that quote to someone more inspirational and someone less disliked? I also know some of you are wondering, where is my package? And the reason I bring up this quote and Jeff Bezos specifically is to highlight the importance of brand in general and think about how that quote and how his name makes you feel. And that is why it's so important for you to think about what your individual brands are. And so when I do a little bit of self-reflection as well, these are some of the things that I've come up with. I know there are people in Iterable that views me as air quote, the executive, uh, potentially the ex-founder, and I'll even add the ex-failed founder, very important, uh, perhaps problem solver. There are a lot of things that I was able to help Iterable with. Uh, the gross margin person, I've had the opportunity to partner with our finance team on how our financials are looking, uh, the tech team, right? Bring on the tech folks. And then of course, I have a suspicion from our product team that my internal nickname is the roadmap escalation machine. That, that is potentially uh, not, not something I like, but that's there. And I'll talk about that in a second. And of course, there's a group of AEs who view me as the deal killer. And, and on the other hand, a group of AEs who view me as the deal saver. And it's so important for everyone to think about, again, what these individual brands are for you. The other thing I want to highlight is the fact that these personal brands ultimately also blend into your organizational brand, which is what I want to talk about next. And so when I, when I think about organizational brand, it always starts with personal brand. Personal brand always leads into your professional organizational brand. And there's a story that comes to mind where at Iterable about a year, year and a half ago, I think there was an internal brand or perception for the sales team where we were discount happy and we were not selling uh, value. And as, as a result, and through a number of circumstances, we were able to bring in an external leader who ultimately helped us go through that transition. And he had a reputation for being value-centric, process-driven, and being a great sales leader in general. But I saw that before he even implemented some of the changes that he ultimately did to make us successful, the perception of the sales team changed almost immediately and that his brand as a value centric leader enabled the rest of the company to see that, okay, sales is now more value centric and it enabled his entire organization to do business easier. And that was just so powerful for me, for me powerful for me to observe. And then the other brand example I'll give is I think my brand as the gross margin guy, just because I've been here for a long time and I've had the opportunity to, to work with the finance team on identifying which deal is good, which deal is bad. And I think that allowed me to transcend the perception of pre-sales being just a sales resource. And instead it is an organizational resource. And as a result, the brand of our pre-sales organization is not, not the one that's about just getting deals in, but instead focused on doing deals that are good for the company. And you start hearing things like deals with pre-sale engagement tends to have better outcome. They tend to stay longer. Deals with lower pre-sales engagement tend to churn at a higher rate. And that is a great place to be. And so ultimately, if your org's brand identity entails this, this idea around excellence, you're going to get less pushback as you think about growing your team, as you think about pushing for strategic changes. And I know we are all trying to transition out of being viewed as, and maybe you're already successful, but a demo monkey, and instead someone who is considered a deal messiah, someone who can influence the deal to help the company in which it is being sold from. And this all starts with your brand as the organizational leader. And so as an another outcome example, Ultimately, our current brand is to a point where our product team trusts only pre-sales people to do product escalation. This means customer success managers, account executives are talking to my organization before my organization makes a formal request to be able to ask our VP of product, VP of engineering to adjust the roadmap. And again, this all starts 
with the organizational brand that we are here to do deals that's going to help the company help the roadmap and not necessarily get a deal in. And lastly, ultimately, I think it's important to know that this is also a double-edged sword. And I'll end this section with, uh, with a quote, another quote from a great man who once said, uh, with great power comes great responsibility. And as you ponder upon your own individual brand, I think it's important to think about the why uh, behind the brand that you're building, because it's a great tool that can help you and your org build influence, but just be extra mindful as you start managing it. And so in summary, I want to talk a little bit about the fact that personal brand is a powerful amplifier. It is going to allow you to do things easier. It's going to allow you to grow your influence. And as an organizational leader, whether it's a team of one or team of a hundred, you have a responsibility to pursue it. And you have a responsibility to own it. And the ask from everyone on the panel is today is think about what is one thing that you've been putting off that can potentially help your brand, whether if it's a a blog post that you've been putting off, whether if it's participating in more uh, PSLC group meetings and sessions, or even helping James out with a podcast, I strongly encourage you to do it. Thank you. Well, thank you, Kevin and Tristan. That was a, a very illuminating session there. Um, can you guys be my accountability buddies? Absolutely. <laughs> I got the <laughs> number, Greg. <laughs> That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. And, and yeah, I might have to tap up James about doing a, a podcast or something because that would be awesome. Um, that was a great session. You know, so much about branding is making sure how people know your intentions and hear about it even when you're not there to tell them at the time.